Hey guys, it's time to get this guy on the road. It's been sitting since last fall. Um, clearly it's not a winter rig. The main reason I parked it was the clutch went out on it. Um, I don't know, might have had something to do with the uh, multiple burnouts that I did with this thing. Even though it's got a little 250 in it, she spins that, that back end pretty good. Uh, also changing it, it's got 456 gears in it, so it just revs way, way, way too much. So I got a new, uh, new clutch pressure plate, ended up finding a different transmission as well. The Saginaw I had was really sloppy. So I got a newer four speed for it. Pulling this 250 out, it's still a good engine. I just, I want something different. So figured I'd put uh, this guy in there. Oh, sorry. That guy. VLS is for something else. So this is a 350 that came with one of my Pontiacs that I picked up, the, uh, the blue one that we went to Ontario for. This guy runs really good. So that's gonna go in there with the four speed. And the diff out of my son's 69 C10, 308 gears is gonna go in the back of this guy. Just gotta change some spring mounts, stuff like that. Um, also got to pull the box because you can't tell, but uh, I got a crack in the frame right around there somewhere. So I'm gonna fix that up. Hopefully get this thing back on the road soon. Forgot to uh, mention here, but has anybody seen one of these? It's an old vintage rooftop carrier built not too far from us, next city over, the big city. Patent pending, so this thing may not even have gone into production, but it's super cool. It's not supposed to be fitting in the back of a truck. It just, it does. It's supposed to have suction cups and the little turnbuckle deals. It's supposed to go on an old station wagon. I don't have a station wagon. I have my sedan delivery, but it doesn't have, doesn't have drip rails. And that's what it's supposed to clamp this to. So got to pull this guy out. Got to take off my rear bumper uh, in case you guys never saw it. This is actually a front bumper from a 57 Chevy car. And I just added these taillights. Those are 66 Corvette lenses. So made my own little sockets, made that all work. Thing fits actually really good. I needed a bumper. This is what I had, so this is what I used. Also need to touch up my wide whites. These are painted on. Good enough for this guy. This one's got a bit of a scuff on it. But yeah, a little bit of touch up paint and uh, it'll look better. That's all I want. Okay. <laughs> I honestly didn't remember how janky I had put this floor in this thing. I honestly didn't expect it to uh, be in the way it was for the amount of time that it was. I honestly don't know how it held in there. Uh, a whole lot of roofing, like uh, sheet metal screws to hold my, my fuel tank was over there. I had a toolbox over here and everything was just kind of laying in place. So now's a good time to actually do it proper. Uh, you can see over here from this angle, see how that box mount is flush with the top of the frame there. And then you look at this side, there's about an inch and a quarter of a spacer in there. And that might have something to do with that chunk of frame missing there. So Dave and I were just talking. We're gonna put a uh, a pull, a pulling point, I guess you'd call it, into the floor. So we're gonna pull up one of these grates. We're gonna epoxy a big uh, anchor bolt into it. Yeah. And then if we need to do frame pulling or something like that, at least at least we have something available. It's not gonna interfere with driving all the time. So if it's in the grate, and this honestly, this grate doesn't work as well this, as it this should. This isn't gonna be a hard bet because these frames are, the, the material with these frames, it is flexible. So with anything, when you start to bend, you gotta go past where you want it to 
flex back to. Yeah, you want to be able to spring back. So, yeah. so yeah, we'll we'll level everything. Well, first of all, we'll put this in here, put the anchor into the grate, level everything, and get it close. Like I don't expect this thing to be 100. percent We figured, so. well, we'll put a block underneath here, and then we'll push on it with the skidster. The skidster's gonna lift off the ground. Yeah. So necessity, mother of invention, obviously. So yeah, it's time we drill holes in our floor to help us out in situations like this. Because once you have it, yeah, it's gonna be like, well, why didn't I do this like two years ago kind of thing? Yeah, exactly. So, it's, it's something we're gonna use all the time. Well, hopefully not all the time, but it's there when we need it. Just another tool in the toolbox, guys. Exactly. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll find a spot where we wanna put this thing. I don't know, maybe we'll put a couple in just because. And then... Uh, why don't we attach these next row? Yeah, those were just laying in there. I think I might have had some screws through the plywood just to keep them from vibrating around. Mm. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> this back one here, it's uh, it's pretty roached actually, but I got another one out in the back 40 there, so. Because we have to consider that uh, we got to tighten all this stuff up because you're putting like 300 bores in this thing now. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, like I say, I'm upgrading to a small block. And also now it's going to be that much easier to change the diff out. So, kind of makes sense to do it this way. Get her done. Get her done, guys. All right, box is off. Sitting over there, super simple, four bolts. Dave helped me with the uh, topper, as you can as you could tell earlier. Uh, but you can you can see just how how crooked this thing is. So, with it being broken, sorry. Uh, right here, all this pressure from the spring is tweaking this thing up. So this is what we got to straighten out. I got a bunch of these excess brackets from a previous bumper to chop off. Straighten everything all out, make it all level. Like I said, we're going to put that lug in the floor so we can do our own frame straightening. If it was a customer's vehicle, I would do something different but it's my own so I'm not super worried about it it's gonna be what it is Dave's under the hood getting everything ready to uh, pull this guy out a couple more bolts the hood can come off make us a little bit more room to work with but yeah hopefully that 350 just drops right in there and hooks itself up yeah that'd be good yeah okay fingers crossed <laughs> Hood removal time. Yep, get this hood off of here. Hold the rad. It's all disconnected. Just gotta take the pressure off. Knock out the motor mount bolts. Pull in the, the handy dandy engine hoist that we are so fortunate to have. Dave remembers how to operate it. Side shift a little bit.
using it so? Uh, just uh, change the.
Okay, so obviously having that forklift makes a huge difference when it comes to pulling this. Um, I guess I should probably pressure wash this thing. It's not super dirty, but not at all. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. No, I can't unplug you because of the stupid battery on the GoPro is down. There, let's do this. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's reasonably clean. It's not like I'm going for show quality or anything, so. Come on. Nope, that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> so, so yeah, just make sure, verify that the 350 is gonna have the same spacing for mounts. Hook the transmission to it, clutch, everything, get it all ready to go and slip her in in one solid motion, hopefully. That's the plan. That's the plan. So we're going for that clean patina look. Yeah. There we go. All right, we're gonna, I'm gonna turn this around. So we're gonna get that guy off the uh, engine stand and meet the trans together with that and then uh, take some measurements slip right in there and then we'll just we'll just magically just go bloop and then done and uh, yeah. then we'll just deal with all the other stuff like plumbing and because there's stuff that's not easy, easy not there right now that's easy, stuff. easy all right so pull this engine off of our run stand, which is now stuffed under that car there. Just, we need the extra room. Uh, got the new flywheel on, the new clutch, the new pressure plate. Yes, we put the pilot bushing in. Uh, put the fuel pump on, it had a block off. We were just running electric pump on the, uh, the run stand. Now we're gonna hook the, uh, hook the bell housing to it. Get that transmission slipped in there. I forgot that I needed a transmission mount for this guy. Was, that other one is pretty much dust, but we'll get it in the truck. It'll fit, we hope. Actually, the distance between that point and this point are very, very, very close. And there's enough slot in the, uh, the motor mounts themselves that we can, uh, we can probably make it work. So hopefully it's a one and done and then figure out what kind of exhaust is gonna fit. I'm hoping headers will fit. If not, like I say, I got some ram horn back, back in the 40 there. I have a hammer. You're not touching. They'll fit. No, no, no. No hammer time. But yeah, here we go. Get this thing ready to go and uh, might be sitting in this thing. Well, it will be sitting in this thing by the end of the day. So that's cool for a Sunday. Okay, we're putting the engine in without the transmission. I have to get a different release bearing. The one I got is too, too big. So uh, here we go. Down. 
go slash your back some more. Yeah. Okay, I'll just move the truck for you. Hang on. Get a block on the wheel here. Yep. Yeah. shim the front of it. It's such a low in there, holy cow. Down a bit. Back down. Down. There. Yeah. Pressure off. Whoa, 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 whoa. Good strength. Okay. Oh, sorry. Good. Okay, you're good. So that went actually really well. I got 
plenty of space, I believe, for my radiator. Worst case scenario, I had to shim the front of the motor mount. Worst case scenario, I'll just push it back and shim the back. But I wanted to leave off enough room for the distributor, so I think we got the room there. Oh, you're doing the header test, are you? Yep. It's gonna work. Is it gonna work? Let's see, do I get headers or do I not? I do not get headers. Might not have, these ones. Might have to lift up some stuff to get them in there. Hmm. And take the dipstick tube out. Dipstick tube, oil filter, oil pan, spring box. I do have other ones, but those ones don't work, so well, we'll be, see. They'd be down there. Yeah, well, I have to look at it like this. Different configuration in the front. So. No, they look like they should fit, absolutely. Yeah. You just have to maybe go from the bottom or just tip the motor over or something. Yeah. We'll figure it out, though. Oh, well, it's more room on this side. Okay, we're trying the other side. Maybe I can get a header on one side and a ram horn on the other. Yeah, that would be cool. And I'll mix it up a bit. Let's see, let's see. No problem there. Uh, well, yeah, a little bit. There's that cross member that's in the way there, so. What, this? Yeah. That? We're still tilting down. We're True enough. Yeah, no, we still gotta come up. We, well, no, if we come <clears throat> up, then we're gonna be even worse. So, whatever, we'll figure it out. That's, uh, it's not a big deal. In my opinion. We'll figure it out. I don't even need that trans that that's for the original motor mounts that used to be on the back of the engine when it was the 235 in this thing. Which obviously it isn't anymore, so that's why it's not a problem. And look at this. Plenty of room. This here. is what I like. We moved the weight back. Yeah. That's it's a performance it's, it's feature. That's my performance brain. So I was hoping it was gonna be tight to the firewall. Yeah, and no, all this thing fits really nice in here. Let's pull it out and uh, try that one. No. <laughs> all right, guys, we'll get, we'll get back to you when we get my uh, transmission parts. Later. Okay, so I cut off a bunch of the unnecessary brackets that were in the rear of the frame rails, uh, straightened them all out. They were kind of tweaked here and there. A little bit of heat, some hammer, the big old crescent wrench there. But now, now you can see just how tweaked that rear of that frame is. Uh, through a level in the front, at this point here, and the bubble is pretty much bang on. Maybe it need a little bit more adjustment. Through a jack underneath just to level everything out. And then you get to this point here, We'll go, we'll go to this point simply because I'm not 100% certain that these are exactly right. But you can see, uh, maybe this way, the bubble is way over here. Same thing. So this, this side has to go down until that bubble is in the middle there. So we're looking at three quarters of an inch maybe so we got that guy that's bryce hi everybody we got the skid steer i've got the front section of the frame supported i've got this all cleaned out i uh, kind of torqued this tore piece out of the way just so that when we heat it we're going to heat this whole area here and then I'm going to put pressure on this corner with that guy, overextend it, let it cool, see where it sits. It might take a little, little bit of finagling, a couple tries maybe. And once I get it where I'm happy, I'm going to fix that all up in there. Probably cut this out so it's not so jagged, put a piece in there. Likely box it, both sides, just because. But we'll give that a try. Anything's gonna be better than that.
Well, that went way better than expected. Uh, Bryce was on this point here with the heat, got her all nice red hot. We ended up changing the, the tip, like the little pencil tip obviously wasn't doing it. So we put the, the, the rosebud on there, heated her up nice, went in the skid steer, pushed it down beyond where I wanted it. The spring came back. Look at that. That is perfectly level. Well, maybe not perfectly, but 100% better than it was. So now if you look back this way, that I can live with. That is so much better. So now I'm gonna make this, well, that's still pretty warm. I'm gonna cut a piece to fill that in, weld all this up, box it, plate it, like I said, and then, then my box is gonna be able to go on there without having to shim this side up like an inch and a half. So very, very happy with that. I'm better with a torch than I am a set of clippers. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a brace thing. But yeah, super happy. Now that I see this though, that looks like it's got a little bit of deflection on it, but I don't care. I want the box to sit square. I want that to not be broken. I want to put a hitch on it someday maybe because I want to pull my Shasta with it. So at least now we have good foundation that we can do that and I'm not worried about it. So not bad for an after hours work session. So happy about that. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. I managed to cut myself a piece to fit here. That little tab that I had bent down earlier ended up breaking off. So I just went, went the whole amount here, uh, used a piece of cardboard, cut a template, got it clamped into place. Everything's all ground up nice. So I'm gonna weld this in and then I'm probably just gonna plate the front of this thing. Um, I'll likely do both sides, just, I don't know, to make it even. And then if I do decide to put a hitch on someday, which actually I don't know if I will because my fuel tank that I'm gonna put in is gonna mount underneath. But we'll see what goes on here. I definitely need to fix that. I'm still super happy with how level everything is now. So I'll weld that in and I'm sure it'll stay but I'm definitely going to reinforce this side somehow. So it's going to be what it's going to be. Like I said before, if this was a customer's car, we would definitely go over and above what needs to be done. This is my own rig. I know it's safe. I know it's going to be fine. That's all that matters at this point. It's been a couple days since I did anything on this guy. Um, managed to get the headers to fit. They actually slipped right in. There was a different set that I had. Uh, I'm not sure what they're from actually, but they just slipped in there no problem. Lots of clearance from the steering box. Underneath that, uh, that uh, cross member back there. Got my fan put in it, alternator bracket. Everything is good there. Plenty of room in front of the rad, from the rad to the fan. Uh, I got a shroud I can put on it if we need it. My valve covers might be a little tall, but I do have another set up on the wall there. Right in there, there's another set. So those will go in. Um, 
Gonna do the transmission today. I got that new shorter release bearing. The other one was way too long. Get that put on and uh, figure out what we're doing with the uh, with the rear end. I have my diff all ready to, to go. My U-bolts, I had to alter them slightly. They were too wide, so I fixed them up. That'll be fine. Got the diff that I'm gonna put in it sitting outside. So once I get this all in, I'm gonna see what I need for a drive shaft because the new one, the new diff, from the center of the, the housing to the front of the pinion is about an inch and a half shorter. So I'm definitely gonna need a longer drive shaft. No big deal. Swap me tomorrow, see what I can dig up. So we really, really jumped ahead. <laughs> we didn't videotape anything. Uh, I think we kind of forgot about it. We were just wanted to get this thing done. So got the headers all in. Uh, we had to clearance the back of that one slightly just to clear that cross member. Uh, Dave's just routing the the temperature sending unit stuff. stuff, I guess, out of the way. Had to make up a rad hose for the upper. Had to do some uh, creative hose work oh, here. This is the cool one over here. This one down here. Um, we had to we had to use where this one came out because this one here is super stuck. So I had to cut a piece of hose that was already pre-bent to a 90. And then we got a connector underneath the alternator here. So that is going to be just fine. Uh, valve covers got more than enough clearance. Well, once they're tight, lots of room. Lots of room. So. Yeah, I gotta go put the shifter on. We dropped it down because I'd, I'd put a plate because this thing sat out over the winter. So I, I basically put a plate over top of this hole just so I didn't get any, you know, little furry friends coming in for a visit. So I was planning on throwing the shifter back in right away and then we, uh, we squirreled onto everything else. So, but that's what we're doing. We're getting things done. Dave wants me to drive it out of here today, so uh, we're gonna put the diff on hold for now because there's a few things I need yet to make it uh, to make it like worth those. Well, that's obviously got to go on there, but <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna fire this guy up here in a bit and uh, see what happens. Okay, so this thing runs like a top. Um, we did we obviously didn't have the carburetor or the distributor or anything in on the last clip. Uh, this distributor and carburetor are for our run stand, so I was at the swap meet this past weekend, and I got myself a new distributor, fully rebuilt. The only thing is it doesn't have the, uh, the vacuum advance. It's been blocked out, so we have the actual piece that it's gonna go in there. Bought myself an old quadrajet. These things are just, I don't know, a lot of people don't like them, but this one, the throttle shafts are nice and tight. It just needs a cleaning and a rebuild probably, but I think I paid 40 bucks for it, so. And Dave can make these things scream, so looking forward to that. These are some mufflers that we had on that 69 Camaro. They were just very temporary, but these are gonna go in the back. Our good buddy Pat at Ram Chargers, he's just up the next town there. He's gonna do the exhaust system on this guy. What else did we do here? Uh, oh, we made some made some rad hoses. Yeah, the rad hoses. We've done that. Put your ex extension in here to make this fit because we're just taking stuff out of the back room. All the uh, used parts, we're making them news to know. So we did a mod. Our Jeff modified this one. There's an actual heater hose underneath here that uh, we cut a ninety out. And yep. We spliced it together to make it. I've already explained Working that part. This but. conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to do. I need to put new valve cover gaskets in. This one leaks like crazy, so I got a big puddle of oil under the truck. But whatever. Uh, added this little block here. My accessories. Uh, this the wiring in this thing isn't exactly what you'd call perfect, but it's functional. So instead of having a bunch of different wires running up to my positive terminal, 
I put this little isolator block in there. I just took that off an old square body we had out back. But yeah, this thing, uh, this thing dances pretty good. I'll just fire it up for you. Let's hear it. Open header alert. in here than with the six banger yeah that six banger was cool I'm keeping that engine it's still a good engine I'll put it in something else but uh, this is gonna make it happier you tell me where you got this water yeah this one came from that car out of uh, Ontario that when I got that Pontiac so but yeah I, I got to adjust my shifter uh, it doesn't want to go into gear properly so there's a on the Saginaw shifters I guess it's kind of hard to explain without having one but there's a, a pin that's got to go through the three different levers and then you adjust everything so that the pin aligns up so do you ever show everybody how you built your brakes in here no nope, we're not going to show anybody that oh okay <laughs> actually yeah i will show you that it's quite the quite the ingenious engineering that Jeff yeah. did yeah so obviously i got oil leak in here so that's from the valve cover gasket up there um so what i wanted to show you I was keeping the, the floor mounted brake and in order for the, the brake pedal to be functional I had to basically piggyback through the original master cylinder which I just gutted it out made a super long extension uh, back in the day Brent bent me up this bracket and then I piggybacked a dual pot master cylinder out of a shoo, what was it like S10 uh, or something. It was an Astro van or something. It works absolutely awesome. So that was kind of cool. It's a little bit of a pain in the in the butt to uh, get to the reservoirs, but I got a plate up there, so not not so bad. Um, drive shaft, like I say, we're not going to do the rear dip at the moment, but the drive shaft is going to be too short because of the distance there. Plus, this drive shaft isn't. Uh, it's seen better days. The truck actually fell off the back of a trailer at one time and uh, put a big dent in it. Didn't notice any vibration, but the way this thing was running at 4,200 RPMs and screaming like crazy, it, uh, I didn't notice it. But I got myself a super long drive shaft the other day at the swap meet, so I got to cut about a foot out of that guy, so that'll make it all much that much better. Uh, temporary fuel tank at the moment just got it strapped onto the truck but but yeah this thing's coming along quite well quite the transformation over the years oh yeah she's fun and I can't wait to get that dual exhaust put on there if you guys haven't already take a second and hit the subscribe button and the like that, uh, that helps with the channel yeah so we're, we're almost done like we yeah, I'll hammered this off in what two days? Yeah, two With days. All the little yeah, no. odds and sods. Yeah, got a couple more hours of stuff to do on it, like I said, and then uh, I'll be able to take it and rip it around the yard to see what it does. Season the clutch, though. So not right. No burnouts right away. Don't do a Dave clutch. No. Do a Jeff clutch. Yeah, let's just uh, do it right. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll uh, we'll see you when we get on to the next one when we do the diff swap. Come check this out, guys. So we're having our third annual charity car show. Uh, we do have other video up on the channel from the other car shows. If you want to go back and check it out. Cool thing this year is we're doing the uh, online registration. You just got to take, oh, apparently, it's new to me, open up your, uh, your camera, just hover it over this thing, bang, takes you to the, uh, the page. Um, and then you can fill out all your details and then send it in. Uh, we are going to be keeping the awareness up of the car show on Facebook and Instagram and obviously the channel here. Um, another thing is, if you don't know what this map is all about, you need to go back in the channel because every one of these pins here is from uh, 
uh, subscribers that message us their location and then we put pins in here where you live so we got people from all over the place so if that's something that you want to do hit the like hit the subscribe and then send us a comment to where you're at and then we'll uh we'll let you know where you are thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one